Acts chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. But I will give you some extra scriptures to consider. The greatest point that I highlighted last time was that uh, discipleship was Jesus' greatest marketing strategy. How many of you can remember that? Again, we read from verse number 13 and verse number 14 of the book of Mark, chapter number 3. And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him, and then he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach. And then he gave them power to heal the sick and to cast out devils. But tonight I'm going to be talking a bit on uh, on communication. Communication. How important it is for you as a disciple to know how to communicate. To know how to communicate. Do you know that it is believed that uh, If you are not well versed in the area of customer care, like some of you here, you are into different businesses that you are doing now. And you know nothing about customer care. All the people that you are employing, they know nothing about customer care. And it is believed that the greatest percentage, up to 80% of the business that you lose in your company, it is a result of your ignorance on that line. Customer care. It turns away potential people, potential clients, potential customers who run away from your organization from your business from your company just because of I don't know whether it is called bad customer care I don't know whether it is called care when it is bad (laughs) you lose more clients than high prices and even the quality of the product I'm helping you because you're not just a disciple here. You have to be a prosperous disciple, right? If you don't know how to treat your customers and you give them a very nasty treatment, that wrong treatment can make you lose the greatest percentage of your clientele, of your people, of your connections compared to your high prices and lower quality. Of your products. If your product is of a lower quality, and if your that same product is of high price, and you know how to treat your customers, you are still going to make it in business. Which means now it's no longer up to the ability or the performance of the product. It is up to the ability of the marketer. How good are you at marketing your product? Which means every disciple should begin to develop what is known as communication skills. Communication skills. For you to be able to market. If everybody here is talking about UFI, UFIC, UFIC, UFIC. Everywhere you go, it's just UFIC, UFIC. 
right. It's a product. To you, that's an outcry. But in as much as they are talking about it, how many are buying it? As a disciple, if I give you right now an opportunity to explain this ministry, how many minutes would you spend? Just talking about this ministry. Without you diverting into any other thing. Just talking about this ministry. How many minutes? Because that comes after you are ordained. Because you are ordained to be around it. So that you can look into it. And be able to see. What is inside of it. For you then to market it. Can I show you something here? Jesus, in as much as he can do any miracle, one miracle that he is not interested in doing is to market himself. Of all the adverts, the advertisement that you have seen on Coca-Cola, not even one of them, you don't even find the founders of Coca-Cola on any of those adverts. Which means it is a law. But when you produce something, you have to find other people that can market it for you. God calls your master. God can call your teacher. And he performs miracles in your presence. He should never try to market himself in your presence as a disciple. When that begins to happen, you need to understand through faith that you have just been fired as a disciple. I've never seen Mr. Coca-Cola and my Coca-Cola advertising their own Coca-Cola. But some people should come into their territory and test how good their product is and advertise it outside there. Are we together? Yes. And that is why even when Jesus sometimes after performing a miracle, demons would want to actually market him. And he would not allow them to do that because that is exactly what I've called these guys to do. I've ordained them to market. Not you. He's trying to protect. I don't know. Or maybe that's what you call patenting, right? Uh -huh. Demons. So many times in the Bible they would try to Expose him. And he will never allow them to do that. Because you are not ordained to market me. I'm the highest product you can talk of. Which can never be marketed by demons. But leave that to my disciples. They will do the marketing when I'm gone. So I've never seen a strategist as organized as Jesus. Jesus is just something else, I'm telling you. Communication. Communication, it has to be understood by every disciple. How do you communicate? How strong are you when it comes to communication? And Jesus would spend hours of the day relating and communicating with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and communicating with some of his even his critics trying to teach them on how to go about it teaching them not just to perform miracles but how to communicate how to communicate How to communicate. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you a question. Very, very simple question. Do you know that we can have an article on the internet of somebody writing about something that happened? Let's say even the miracle that you saw happening. Okay? All of us, maybe you were there and you saw it happening. And one of you can go on the internet and just 
put it there. And now everybody can see it. And then we have 20 people that are commenting against it. Okay, for example. Let's say we have, all of us have been to the National Sports Stadium. Right. And after that, such a conference, somebody can write an article like, there was nothing there except collecting money from poor people. It's on the internet. And you were there. Right? Let's say you were sitting there and no collection was done. And you see it on the net. And other people are even commenting. That's why I didn't even go there. Because I knew that that was the main reason why that whole program was... You know, I, I knew it was a setup just for them to get my money, so I didn't go. But it's amazing because we now have 20 people commenting, supporting, or maybe commenting in a negative way but just compare that to the people that attended who are not willing to sacrifice their time to put in and to post a positive comment everybody can look at it and say why are they lying this never happened but you are telling yourself and you're telling somebody next to you your critics and your enemies are now at a higher level of trying to undermine you. But you know, as for you, you don't have methods of marketing what God has given you. Very few people. That's why it is easy. You can put a comment on the net and <laughs> do you know what people think? If they see something negative written about me, and all the comments are just supporting that. People tend to think that so he doesn't have any support. But you come to our church with thousands of people that are not even exposed to that, to that platform, to that level of marketing. They don't see it as an assignment for them to look for such uh, articles. I know sometimes the owners might be in a business of deleting all the positive comments. <laughs> but why don't you have such a platform yourselves where you can also delete the negative? Why can't you? Because who are those people? Where are they? They are not doing this from another planet. That's why I see now people were trying to complain and work against our television channel and trying to ask some funny questions. Why? Because the, now they know. They had an opportunity to give us a very bad paint. Now that we have our own platform, we display what we are doing. And they are worried because now people get to know that no, 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 no. no. What we've been hearing and what we're seeing are totally two different things. So the devil will always take advantage of you when you don't have a platform market what God has given to you. That's why these Bibles that we are reading today, nowadays, they were bent over years and years trying to wipe them out of this entire planet. Burning Bibles, burning Bibles until now we still have it. Any medium that can market the product, the devil goes after it. goes after you. Some of you might think, ah, 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 that's not our business to respond. That's not your business when you're not a disciple. Okay? The moment you become a disciple, that's the only job that you can do. You don't have anything else to do. <laughs> I, I, I might talking to somebody. Yeah! 
if it is a program on television, the phone should ring off the hook. How can they be waiting for, can we have another caller? Please call those numbers. Please call. Out of the thousands of people that we have, giving drunkards an opportunity to call. Why? Because we are not ready to defend. When Jesus called them, that's why they were called witnesses. Go and be my witnesses. A witness is not just somebody who is ready to witness. It's somebody who is ready to die for what he saw. That's a witness. That's why all of them, they died defending what they saw. Don't worry about what happens after that. The more you kill us, the more this thing is going to spread. So the first thing that you should learn to do as a disciple is this one. You need to develop your listening skill. We'll be talking about understanding. Listening skill, then I will close. Listening skill. I want you to put it in both. It's skill. It is a skill. Listening it is a skill. Listening. 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 It is a skill. It is a skill. And that skill comprises of three things. Three things. The first one is hearing. The second one is understanding. The last one is judgment. When you want to convert your listening into a skill, these three things should be considered. Hearing, understanding, and judging. I'll explain. I'll explain. Because Jesus is going to spend much of his time talking to you. Hmm? (laughs) He's going to spend most of his time talking, talking, talking or speaking to you. Which means if you are weak in the area of listening, you are going to lose most of the information. What qualifies you to be a proper disciple? It is your ability to listen before you can talk. And you know that if you become a good listener, likely going to get a job as compared to when you are good at talking and speaking. When you are a good listener, you are likely going to be offered a job than when you are a good speaker. Because already we have good speakers. And there's a lot of competition. Everybody's trying to be heard. And nobody is ready to listen. Which means there is a vacant. Every speaker now. The reason why he is speaking is looking for an audience. But not everybody in the audience is able to listen because it is a skill. The moment you develop that skill and you are able to listen to the speaker and collect and get orders from him, you are likely going get a job that you might not have gotten when you were a good speaker. 
Because when it comes to speaking, the market is already it's jam-packed. Everybody, every way wants to say something. Nobody's ready to listen. Three things are needed. When you are listening, what is happening there is that you are hearing. Hmm? You are no, 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 you are not here, not here, you are not here. Ha. I think this was supposed to be our first lesson. Anyway, Jesus did it at the end. But listen, <laughs> when you are listening, you are hearing and you are understanding and you judge. I will explain this. I remember some years ago, after we had a very, very good harvest, Zarabani. And then my father said, son, it's high time that we get another tractor so that we don't suffer this coming season like we suffered the previous season. Let's get a tractor. And we moved around drove like in 400 kilometers from Zaraban just trying to get a tractor. And finally we got one but the tractor that we got, it wasn't in good condition. This is how we saw it. We went to a place in Centenary and they were breaking tractors. And my father saw the engine on the table. And my father said, where is the body for this engine? And the mechanic said, the body is over there. And we saw the body. And we saw the engine. And then they said, the owner of this tractor, we are not sure, but from what we heard, I think he is selling the tractor as it is. And my father said, I am interested. And the owner had already shared, I think, his uh, intentions to sell the tractor with the owner of this uh, business where they were breaking tractors. And my father went into the office of the manager and he said, I want to buy this tractor. And the manager had to call the owner of the tractor. And the owner of the tractor just pegged his price. And that is everything that we got that, that, that year. That was everything. Exactly as if he knew how much we had. That was the price. And then my father said, you are going to pay for it right now. And to me, I, it wasn't making sense because I didn't, that wasn't a tractor to me. These are just pieces of metal. Pieces of metal. Pieces of metal. And my father was ready to pay. Not just ready. He paid for it. He paid for it. Went into the, into the office and paid everything. We left with nothing. He said, Father, are you sure this tractor can be resurrected? This one. father said, my son, I've seen everything. This tractor is in good condition. And I said, why are they breaking it? Let's go for something which we can buy and then drive right away. Because he's a man of vision. He knew what was going to come out of that. And then after paying for that tractor, he said, I want you to put it together once it is ready, let me know. And then they began to work on it and we had to get into a bus and go back to our places waiting for them to finish. So it took them weeks to put everything together. So my father would come after four or five days, he would say, let's go again, let's go there. 
you know, we didn't have phones, right? To even inquire how far they had gone. We had to get into the bus again and go and see for ourselves. So, finally, after so many visits, the tractor was done. It was complete. When we arrived at the place, I'm sure it was like maybe the... <laughs> 13th time or something like that. We saw it parked there. They were already cleaning it. And they said, all that is left now are the papers, but you can collect. Once we are done with the papers, the owner has to come and we have to sign some few things. And then you can drive it away. And I got a feel of it. It was good. My father also tried it. It was so good. But we couldn't get the owner on that day to come and approve. So we had to wait for him again. And my father said, you can go back. I'm not leaving this place until I get my tractor. So in the process, we had another relative of ours who was a very, very good mechanic. And he came to our place and my father was not there. I had left my father in centenary. And then he came to our place in Zaraba and he said, ah, where is Mdara? Where is Mdara? I said, Mdara is in centenary. He's waiting for the signing of the papers once he's done. Then I'll be going back to drive the tractor from there. And then he said, I'm going to Harare, but I'll just pass through that place and see what is happening. And then I said, okay, so it's better if we can go together. Then because he was driving. So that was okay. So I had to just jump into his car and we drove past through that place. And fortunately, by the time we arrived, the owner of the tractor was there. He had already signed. My father was actually just waiting for me to come and drive the tractor. So this relative of ours, he said, which one did you buy? I said, that one. And then he went to this tractor, just started it. And the mechanic that was working on the tractor, the moment he started the, the tractor, he was very, very quick to begin to put some revs. And this one, our relative now, he said, no, 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 don't do that. Don't even step on the, on the gas. Just, just leave it like that. Stop it. And then he, he had to switch it off. Start it again. It was just one kick. To us, that was our first tractor that we would use a key to start. So to us, that was enough. And then he did it like two, three times. And he said, don't touch anything. Leave it. Let it idle like that. It was just idling, 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 idling. And he said something. He said, who did this tractor? And the mechanic said, it was me. How is it? And he gave him a list of things that he never changed. You never changed this. You never changed that. You never changed that. If we open it right now, those parts that I'm telling you now are already used. They are, they are worn out. And that mechanic was standing there. He was shocked. And then our relative said to my father, you, you can't collect it now, they have to replace. If you are telling me that they to change everything on this, some of the things, they never changed it. The moment you bought it, they put it back. And my father said to these guys, you guys tell me the truth. And these guys said, exactly, what are you saying is the truth? That's what our boss told us to do. And they had to open it again and put everything new. And the moment our relative left, all the mechanics were coming asking us, who is this guy? Who is this guy? He's serious. But imagine, as for us, we were ready to take it away. Why? Because we were just at a level of hearing and not understanding. Hearing 
and not understanding. Here comes somebody who is able to listen. He has developed <laughs> enough skills to listen. And he is hearing and he is understanding. And he can pass judgment. So as a disciple, you have to go beyond just hearing. into understanding because hearing do you know that <laughs> hearing all of us we can hear all of us there are so many things that you can hear but you're not able to understand you can hear so many things but you're not able to understand like the moment i walked in here i heard there was like a co -co 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 over there And I do ask you, what is that? I'm hearing, but I can't understand. I can't understand unless I get an explanation. So you can be in the presence of the speaker as a listener. If you have not developed your listening skill, you are missing everything that is happening in your presence. It's happening as you are there. It is a skill. Because as of you, like you have your businesses, right? The people that are working for you should be taught. Especially on how to listen. Not just on how to talk to the customers, but to listen to the customers. Listening to your customer. It is actually an ability. Disciples, listen to me. Even if you are not good at counseling people. But as long as you are able to listen. You have already counseled the person halfway. Am I talking to somebody? Counseling people don't even try to premeditate. What am I going to say when that person comes? Because most of those people that are having problems in their lives, it's not like they are looking for a very good advice. They are looking for a listener. So by the moment you are able to listen to her, she's actually surprised for the first time. She's come across somebody who is ready to listen. That is counseling. Most of these people that you are trying to help right now, they don't even need your advice. They are looking for a listening ear. Some of them, you give them th for the next 30 minutes. He's foaming, complaining, insulting, very angry. Before you can even answer him, he's already relieved. Because you have provided a place for that information that was bothering him. Just by listening. Just by listening. And also understanding comes by listening. Let's say like in our organization like this. You're working for this ministry. This is um, United Family International Ministries. UFIM or UFIC. Right. This is different from, from your own personal phone. And you are on the phone. And somebody calls you on that line. The moment the phone begins to ring, you must understand this information you have to even to distribute it to your own people that are serving under you. Because as you are a disciple, you have to also have your own disciples. Are they able to market what you are doing? It is believed that if you are calling any organization, the phone is not supposed to ring more than three times. Huh? 
It was ringing more than three times, up to four times, up to seven times. It is a statement. It's a message. Already competent people and professional people can tell right from the ringing of the phone and nobody's speaking that you cannot deliver on time. It's a message that you are not available. So just by not picking your phone, you've already answered the phone. It's a message that I've already conveyed. This information, I don't know how you can convert it. I don't know how you are going to apply it. But I know that if you understand what I'm talking about, you will begin to master every area of your life. Just by this information. Your own personal, that's okay. But listen to this. Everybody out there, if it is after hours, they know that you offices might have closed. That's not a problem. But when it is working hours and it's not lunch time, which means even yourself, the owner of the organization, you must be calling your office. Okay, let me let me tell you this. Even myself, I have called UFIC so many times. I have received so many counselings. Myself. What are we talking about here? Because in as much as the product is good, as long as you don't have good people to market it, it becomes a bad product. These are skills that should be taught because a disciple should, be, should have access to such information. That is what makes you a disciple. Your ability to listen. You are ordained to listen. You hear. You understand. You judge. You judge. Let me give you an example. We are not able to understand. We are not able to judge. And we're not, not able to hear. This is what happens. I can call you now and say, please come. And then you come and you stand. Right. And then I'll give you an assignment. I will say, um, I'm thinking that we should have our New Year's evening service at the HICC this year. But I'm not sure of the fares. How much are they charging? And because you are also not sure, you say, ah, I'm also not sure. Right? I didn't tell you to go and inquire. I'm asking you. And I'm giving you my consent. I wanted to have our service at the HICC this year. New Year's evening. But I'm not sure of the charges. How much does it cost for us to have such a service there? This question is coming to you. And it is a question. And inside of that question, there is a sending away. You should be able to understand. Because if this thing is giving my master, my teacher concern, I should be ready to provide any answer to the questions that are coming to me. Are we together? Amen. Right. So let's say you go there and you ask, how much is it? And they'll tell you maybe it is $2,000 a service, just one night. Right? And then you come back and you tell me, ah, uh, men of God, I went there and they said it's $2,000 a night. And then I'll ask you, 
is the place available on that night? Uh, okay, that part I didn't ask. I thought maybe you just... <laughs> As for you, you are so innocent. I'm not even blaming you. <laughs> At your level, everything is normal. Because you are saying, I never heard you asking about whether the place was available. All I heard was the fair. Hmm. And then you go back. And again, you ask that one question. You come back again. And looking at the nature of our ministry, I'm going to ask you, are they going to allow us to put tents outside? Uh, 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 uh. I think they will agree. Ah, those people, because the one that I spoke to is very... <laughs> they are still at the, at the level of hearing. You should have heard and understand and judged You go there carrying only one question that was given to you and you have been able to understand the meaning of the question. And you have been able to judge the question according to the magnitude of the ministry. And you go to the place and you are asking the first question. I've come to inquire about your place, a very wonderful facility that you have. How much does it cost per night? $2,000. Is it available? For that particular night. Yes, it is available. Oh, you mean nobody has paid for it? Nobody has paid for it. Okay, so for that 2000 what is covered in the 2000 Maybe you've got some extra, some snacks and the like, and maybe even the <laughs> uh, some people might be allowed to sleep on the place. Okay? So, if you're going to have a function on that night, how many hours can you give us before for the preparation? If we are, going, if we are not going to fit inside, are you going to allow us to have other people standing outside or maybe pitch a tent? How about power cuts? Do you always have water here? Do you always have power? Ah, from one question. <laughs> you are able to come back with a detailed report. Because not only are you hearing, you are able to understand and to judge. It is a skill. It is a skill. Listening is a skill. You have to be able to hear and to understand what the speaker is saying and to judge what he said. I remember some time, I'm sure it was 95 somewhere there, And we'd, we'd introduced something at our place. We said, because all of us, we are bad when it comes to speaking in English. So we said, everybody here, we are going to be using that one language. But it was difficult, of course. So if you're going to say anything in Shona, you were going to be punished to do most of the work at home. It was around 1995, somewhere there. So I remember one day, we were just sitting there talking about something with my young brother, Tawanda. And then, I remember that I'd forgotten to switch off the, the stove. And now I was, I was enjoying my tea. And I said, Tawanda, the must stove. And he remained seated there. He remained seated. And 
And I was sitting there until we finished watching the movie. And I, after doing all that, I had to take the plates and everything. I went into the kitchen. I realized that the stove was still on. Very hot. The whole place was hot. I said, you're in Tanda. I told you. Could you do the same stove? I said, no, 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 you never told me that. I said, I told you, it's the master of. I said, ah, I hate like you said, the master of. <laughs> this is a true story, I'm telling you. That's what he said. I said, the master of, the master of what? <laughs> you know, he was listening. But you know, after listening, you should have judged at least. The master of what? Which means the judgment on its own was very wrong. If he had judged, he was supposed to ask me another question. When you are listening, you look at the word itself. The first letter that you find there is L. Listening, right? I would want you to write it, maybe write, write, write it from the top going down. You write L. You write I, you write S, you write T, and E, N. What letter do you have on top? Followed by? Followed by? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the last one? Okay. The first one that you see there, L, it is look. When you're developing your listening skills, you have to know how to look. Focus on the person that is talking to you. Listening, okay, okay. Listening on its own is actually an ability. To correctly understand the message that is being conveyed during communication. That is listening. It is the ability to correctly understand the message that is being conveyed during communication that is listening. But that first letter that you see, look, it's part of the things that you have to follow when you're developing your listening abilities. Look. Look at the person. But you can't do that when you are on the phone. I said something about the phone, right? Okay. Let me finish that one and then I'll come, I'll come to this. So what happens is this. When somebody calls you and you're working for an organization, this is how you answer. Right? It is ringing for how many times? Three times at least. And then, hello, good day. This is UFIC. Thank you for calling. My name is Emmanuel Makandiwa. How may I help you? Right? That's communication. Hello. Good day. This is UFIC. And my name is Emmanuel Makandiwa. How may I help you? Okay. This is something that we don't do in Africa. I'm coming back to this uh, <laughs> listening thing. The problem is this. It's a privilege for you to even receive a call. And number two, they are calling you not on your own personal basis. You represent an organization which you should be 
flexible and quick enough to declare what you represent. You are not there for yourself. You are not there to market yourself. You are there to market the product UFIC. So the moment somebody calls you, don't allow the person to ask you who you are. You are not... Listen, listen, listen. You are already complicating the communication process. Your duty is to lessen the burden of the person that is calling. Make it simple for him. That is something that you can create. I'm not talking about your own personal phone. I'm talking about when you are represent, you're, you're, you're in an organization and you are there as a disciple. The fact that somebody has called you, he really wants to make sure. Because he will never, he is never going to disclose anything unless he is sure that he has called the right place. So those are obvious questions. Don't wait for him to ask you that. How may I help? May I please talk to Mr. So-and-so? Okay, sir. Can you allow me to put you through to his line? If he says yes, just hold on for a minute, for, for two minutes, for three minutes. If you know that he is on another line, you have to come back to him again and tell him, I'm very sorry, he's on another line. It's possible if you can call again. You don't hang somebody for minutes and minutes and minutes and he's wondering, is, hello, 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 there's nobody there. And the person is hearing every conversation that is happening within your organization. Most people that we have I don't know. I don't know. As for you are wondering why your business is not growing. <laughs> These are people that you have employed. You don't have a way of number one training them because we don't believe in discipleship. They should be trained just on how to answer the phone. How do you respond to an angry client? Members of our church, those are clients. This is God's business. I've heard people say, you know, the problem that we have in our days is that uh, some of these guys are running churches like businesses. That's why their churches are flourishing. The moment you stop running a church as a business, it stops growing. What did Jesus say? When they were looking for him, they found him in the house of God and they said, don't you know that I should be doing my father's business? Church, it is God's business. That's why we don't have a lot of members in most of the churches. Because we don't care what the customer is going to think about. We can answer him anyhow. Customer care. Member care. It is needed in the house of God. Do you know that when you are answering your phone, your smile should be heard? Not seen. I'm talking, I'll be talking about looking very soon. Your smile. When somebody is answering his or her phone and he's smiling, you can tell. Uh, am I lying? <laughs> you can tell the person is smiling. There are certain people that my wife would call and she would tell me, ah, this person that I called, she was so happy to receive a call. And I would ask her, was she laughing? No, she wasn't laughing. So how do you know she was happy? Did she tell you that she was happy? No, she didn't tell me that she was happy. How, how did you know that she was happy? These are things that you don't understand. How are you going to market? The product. So 
by. On the phone. Ha. Most of you are not good communicators. Do you know that even if I call you right now on your personal phone, and the person you, you need to, to understand because if you if you are if sensitive people are calling you let's say 10 of them they are calling you you have received calls from 10 of the most sensitive people in your life when i say sensitive i mean people that have got a level of understanding i'm not talking about everybody who can call you people that are concerned about your day-to-day -day routine and your responsibilities People that do not just uh, bang into your diary and into your program anyhow. People that are concerned. People that are willing to withdraw when you are busy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they don't feel threatened by that. You can openly tell them, I'm busy now. I will call you later and they are not offended. People like that. Those are people. Real people. You can't do that to everybody. But real people in your life, you can openly tell them, I'm not coming to your function. I'm busy with something else, then I'll see you after that. And he's not offended. Okay. And out of ten, seven of them, every time maybe you answer your phone, they will ask you, are you busy? And you would say, I'm not busy. What is wrong with your accent? Check what is wrong with your voice. You are not a good communicator. You are shutting important people out of your territory. Because you are not a good communicator. No, no. No, no. Then the person will ask you, <laughs> are you busy? Can I call later? No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not busy. <sighs> Remember, I'll give you scriptures and you'll see that there was a time when people would come desiring to see Jesus, but before they could meet with Jesus, they had to go through the disciples. Yeah? Yeah? There's, there's a protocol in the Bible. But how, are you able to lead somebody to Christ? When my father, because that's my speaker, and I'm ready to take orders from him, when he calls me in the night, and I see my phone ringing, and I was already asleep, I try by all means before I answer it, it's, as quick as possible, in the next two seconds, I have to make sure that my voice is okay. <laughs> Hello, Papa. Hello, Papa. Hello, Papa. How are you? Because, because he's concerned. If I'm, I'm resting, definitely he's going to cut his foot. And who is going to lose? I want to sound like I was ready for him. But sometimes answering him like, oh, Lord. <sighs> actually you are communicating that <laughs> I need to rest. This actually it happens even among us yourselves. Some of you are couples and you cannot communicate. Later on talking about discipleship here and talking about marketing other things. Ah, ah. Here we'll be talking about everything. Because discipleship should touch every area of your life. How do I dress as a disciple? <laughs> Listening, it is a skill that you can learn, practice, exercise. You can get it wrong so many times, but as long as you keep on practicing it, you will find that your place will always be there 
closer to influential people if you are ready to, to listen and to take orders. So if your phone is ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and, ringing and, and you are not picking, the problem is this. After saying this to you, you can also maybe follow me and you see my phone ringing and I'm not picking and you say, ah, <laughs> but <laughs> he's not picking his phone. And he was teaching me to pick my own phone. You, you know, your comparison is totally different. It's wrong. Because in my case, you can only compare me with my father. When it is my father calling. Are we together? Yes. In your case, it is when I am calling. For well, some of you, after saying this, you will then want to try me. Let me call him and let me see if he's going to pick. In this case, you are the disciple, <laughs> I am the teacher. And when my father is calling, he is the teacher and I am the disciple. Ready to take orders. Are we together? Are we together on this one? <laughs> so there is an art. That's why you see when you go to a restaurant or maybe to some of these good hotels, you order food, right? And you are sitting there and you are enjoying yourself. The waiter has to be waiting somewhere. Like this. He'll be waiting somewhere. And that somewhere should be a place where you can see him. And it also should be a place where he can see you. And at the same time, he should be looking at you. And yet at the same time, he shouldn't be looking at you. He should give you an opportunity to really swallow what you are eating was keeping on looking at you like that and you are enjoying your food. It's, it's not comfortable. So he has to be somewhere in between looking at you but not really looking at you. And the moment you need something extra like salt, if it is not there on the table or maybe you need water or maybe you need an, another special drink, it shouldn't be an issue of shouting no 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 it has to be just a sign like that and you see him running coming ready to save you a level of communication has gone ahead of everything because that's his area of specialization he has been doing that over and over and over again how come you don't develop yourself in the area of listening and yet you are ready to take orders? This is your only area, taking orders. And you struggle in that area. So when somebody is talking to you, <clears throat> look. Look at the person. Look at the person, but when you're looking at the person, please try to find a place where you can look at. Because the person that is talking to you, he has got a lot of areas, right from the top up to the... <laughs> up, to the up to the shoes. Ha! <sighs> Looking at the person when he's talking to you, it's a way of communicating. It means I'm here. Look at the person. Look him into the eyes. But after every five to seven seconds, you look down a little bit and then you look at him again. Because if you keep on looking at him, that's wrong again. It's, it, you are sending another message. It means you are an aggressive person. You are showing another behavior which is strange. Because mo so many people have been told that when you are going for an interview, look at the person. Look at the person. And throughout the interview, somebody is doing like this and answering every question. You will never get that job. You will not get it. 
try to do it in a decent way. You look at the person when he's talking to you. You look down a little bit to give him a chance. You give him a chance to wipe away some saliva and whatever it is. You give the person a chance. You pause and then you look again. You pause and then you look again. So remain focused on the person that is talking to you. Remain focused. Remain focused. Make sure that you don't get distracted by anything happening around you. I'm training you to be a good listener. Am I doing that? Make sure there is nothing disturbing you around. If you, if you are at a place where there is a lot of noise, it's better for you to say to the speaker, can we find another proper place where you can, we can see there is a lot of noise here. Because if there is anything that is disturbing you, you might not be able to get the information that you are supposed to get. Anything that disturbs you, I know this, if I'm talking to my wife, it doesn't matter the issue is a very sensitive issue. The moment the baby cries, because there is a connection which can never be underestimated. She wants to know what has happened to my child. Are we together? So that moment I should be able to pause a little bit and also join her. And all of us would want to know what has happened there. And then we can continue. But these are moments when you say things and she might not even hear what you are saying. And four days later you tell her, this is what I said. And she said, you never told me. You never told me. I can remember everything that you said that day. But not that one. You never said it. But during that communication, something happened. She was supposed to be able to ask for an opportunity for me. When you are developing your listening skills, focus becomes the most important thing. Do you know that if you are not listening, even if you are not hearing anything, and you remain focused, the speaker will continue. You know what I'm saying? Some of you know how to, how to do it. <laughs> you know how to do it. Eh? <laughs> even when you are not hearing anything, but as long as you can look at the person, the person thinks that I'm being heard. So it's an art. You have to look at the person. Make sure you don't look anywhere else. If you are discussing about important matters, it's better to switch off the television. Because most people, they are very comfortable when we are talking and the television is on. They look at you, they look at the television, look at you, look at the television, look at you, look at, look at the television. Switch it off. You remain focused. Attention is needed. Let's say I'm talking to you. Right? And your focus is turned towards something. I remember one day we were watching a certain program on television and we saw a, this particular lady was in, that, in the service and she was like, And before I could say anything, my wife said, that one is not listening at all. I said, that's right. You can see. You can see the absence of the brains, of the mind. Even when a person is there like this, you can tell this one is not listening. It's not a problem at all, but it becomes a problem. When you are in the business of marketing something. What is the next letter? I. Inquire. 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 When the person is talking to you, you have to inquire. When somebody is giving you orders, inquire. During the communication, during the conversation, you have to be also asking questions. Oh, when? How? What? 
so that you can be sure. You can be sure. When you are listening, you have to be inquiring. Sometimes you don't get it as it is. You have to be inquiring certain things. Ah, it happened in Gweru. Ah, when was this? It was yesterday. That part, you are very sure of it. It was in Gweru and it was yesterday. Because you are also inquiring as you are listening. Are we together? What is the next letter? Summarize. Somebody might be talking to you for giving you orders for two hours, but you should be able to highlight, to understand the main points. I can be talking to you and even complaining to you and even insulting you. When you are being insulted, it does, it's not an issue of time. You can spend the whole day insulting each other. But you should be able to summarize what were the most important areas that were highlighted. How do you get those areas? Some of the people when they are communicating, they even indicate. They will even tell you, listen, listen, my point is this. He's even giving you the point. My point is this. What I'm saying is this. Those are the words. And then you will know that the entire conversation was revolving around this area. Hmm? Hmm? What is the next letter? Take notes. Take notes. This information I'm giving is not mine. I can get it anyway. I'm, a good, I'm good at researching. But I'm just giving it to you so that you can also apply it. So many people are doing these researches and coming out with definitions and, and so on. But it's for us to benefit, right? Mm-hmm. Take notes. Take notes. Take notes. Take notes. Especially you. You know yourself very well. <laughs> you know yourself very well. You know, if if my wife, your mother, wants to inquire anything from me, or maybe I've given her an assignment that I want you to do this for me tomorrow, she will write it down. Then stick it on the door that before she can walk out of the bedroom, it will be there. Okay? Not because I'm angry at her when she's not done it, but she's angry at herself. She's not happy when she's not able to perform. That's a disciple. So she's not just a wife. She enjoys taking orders. I don't even send her to do anything, but she makes sure she has got a way of finding out what I'm interested in the following day so that she can do it. So looking at your brains, you know you, it's easy for you to forget. But how come you don't take notes? You have to be taking notes for you to be a good listener. And also even when you're taking notes, if it is the two of you and you're talking to each other and one of you is on the phone like this. He might be taking notes. But make sure that the person that is talking to you knows that you are taking notes. (laughs) You can't even tell the person that, okay, what I'm doing here, I'm now taking notes. But there's a way of communicating. Sorry, there's something that you said. I I missed another point. There's something that you said. Then the person might know, okay, maybe this person is taking what? Notes. If the person is not aware, you switch the person off. What is the next letter? Encourage. 
encourage the person that is talking to you. Encourage the person. Do you know that even when you are on the phone and somebody is, is, is I used to do that even myself when somebody is talking to me. He would ask me like, hello, are you there? And then I would say, I'm, I'm still here. I'm, here. I'm listening. The person is narrating his story for more than a minute and there is nothing coming. There's no response. There's no encouragement. And the person has to ask, are you still there? And I'm there. Which means there is nobody on the other side of the, of the line. Which means I should be responding. Okay. Wow. My goodness. When was this? Oh, 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 oh. Were you there? I was there. You see, you are, you, are, you are encouraging the person to keep on saying more. You are not trying to switch him off. So you should be doing that even as a couple. Somebody goes out, he comes back. She has got her own story to tell. Is there anybody there to listen? Is there a good listener? Do I have a husband here who can listen? Who can look at me? Switch off your computer. Look at me and listen. Can I get a person like that? In the house. Hmm? Hello? <laughs> Are you a good listener? Disciples, are you good listeners? <laughs> you should be able to understand why somebody has chosen you. Of all the people, she's coming to explain something to you. Why you? Are you ready to sacrifice your time? And disconnect yourself from any other communications. Switch your phone off for a while. And listen to what I'm saying. She says something which is very, very sensitive. And then you pick your phone. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm coming. Okay. Hello? Hello? And you... And she's crying. You are insensitive. You are, you, are, you are not a marketer at all. You can't market anything on earth. Nobody can buy anything from you. Nobody. 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 <laughs> it doesn't matter how good the product. Nobody can buy it from you. Nobody. You have to encourage. You have to encourage. I've seen people laughing and smiling. Most of these air hostesses that you see, you get into the, you know, <laughs> you see a lot of difference when you get into some of these, like our local <laughs> airlines in Africa. <laughs> Even in business class, you are treated just like any other person. But out there, you are not even allowed to take off your jacket on your own. They are already there. When you, when you want to recline, when you want to sleep, they are there to make sure they prepare the bed for you. You just stand there and they will prepare everything for you, make you comfortable. And all the way she's smiling. It doesn't matter that she's got the issues at home. She's not supposed to demonstrate that here. Here you are representing another product. Which is bigger than yourself. We don't want to hear about your issues. People should not know that there's an issue between yourself and your husband over the phone. Keep it yourself. Keep it to yourself. You should always be happy. If somebody can be doing that, you know, this a hostess, some of them, it's not like coming from South Africa to, to this place like one hour, 30 minutes. We're talking of 18 hours. The person is still smiling. 18 hours. 
just because of money. How about the kingdom of God? How about the kingdom of God? So many people that were busy preaching the gospel to opening scriptures, you should have just smiled and give him love. Love. That's the fastest way of winning a soul. Love. Fastest way. Love the person, you can win him. Get him to do anything. Accept your product. Encourage. You, you, you have to encourage. Encourage. Why is it difficult for you, even when you are in a church service? So many people, if well, they are not disciples, even when the preacher is touching on something which is very, very exciting, you try by all means not to seem to be excited. That's when you hear a preacher calling for hallelujah more than seven times. Amen, 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 amen. No response. Why? They don't have listening skills. You don't encourage. A disciple should be an encourager. <laughs> oh, that's what she said. Okay, okay, okay. Eee, wasn't it a joke? Ah, I don't think it was a joke. So what did you tell her? What did you say yourself? And then she will say, this is what I told you. And I said, mm, mm, that was a wise decision. I hope she had you. I hope she had you. You told her that? Yes, I told her that. Mm. I don't think there is anybody who is ever going to give her that kind of advice. You are also encouraging the person. You are encouraging the person. Neutralize. Try to be neutral. Try to be neutral. The reason why most of you it is not easy for you to get orders, it is because you have got your own preconceived ideas. You are not neutral at all. When somebody comes to you and is giving you information, you are already biased. And that will distort even the information that you are going to be receiving. Your judgment of the information that you are getting from the speaker is going to be compromised because you are not neutral. You are not listening from a point where you don't know anything. Just like when your boss tells you to come he comes to you and he tells you I want you to come to my office tomorrow okay 9 o'clock I want you to be at, at my office without fail and from that moment up to the following day before 9 o'clock you have <laughs> you have scanned through everything you are wondering why what could be the issue by the time you get to his office, you are no longer neutral. You already have something in your mind. And if you are not careful, you will begin to answer questions that are never asked. I'm telling you this. I'm trying to help you. This is why even Jesus, you know Jesus said it. Jesus said, when they invite you to the courts, never try to think that what are we going to say when we get there? Because by the time you are asked the questions, you are not neutral. It's an instrument when it comes to communication. When you are being given orders, don't take it as a confirmation of what you were thinking. Most, in most cases, what you were thinking is not even what he's talking about. <laughs> you go out there and you do the wrong thing. Because you took it as a confirmation of what you were hearing or what you were uh, pondering upon, or what you were meditating. And yet he's talking about something totally different. Be neutral. Try to neutralize your brain. Thank you. Let us read it together. Luke chapter 12, verse number 11. Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 
Okay, because during the time that they will ask you a question, the Holy Spirit shall give you a word. So is Jesus telling us never to prepare for anything? No, no, no. Don't take it out of context. He knows that you are going to be saying the wrong things if you take thought. Be very, very careful because in most cases you are going to imagine wrong things. Try to relax. Try to relax, especially when the speaker is talking to you. Relax. Do the encouraging. Right? You are feeding back. They call it decoding and encoding. You do all that in the process. But make sure you don't have preconceived ideas. You might think you are on the same plane, but it's a totally a different thing that he is talking about. The speaker is talking about something different than what you are thinking. Try to be neutral. And as the speaker is talking to you, you can't be able to answer properly if you have not understood what he is saying. And also don't try to gather answers when questions are still coming to you. Because your entire communication office will shut down. Do you know that thoughts, they travel four times faster than words. Before you can say one word, four thoughts. So you need to be able to manage your thinking pattern when the speaker is talking to you. He can lead you to a place and leave you there and then he begins to talk about something else which is very important and you are still there. You are still there. Because that thought will connect you to another thought and that thought to another thought and that thought to another thought. You can do it. Go on the internet right now. You can open a certain page and there can be something which is calling for your attention and then you click that one. You go to another page and there will be something on that page again. At the end of the... <laughs> you will find yourself in a strange place wondering how did I even get here? Why they have started the brains of people. It's very easy to divert somebody. So you should have a way of mastering your mind during communication. Never to end up in a place where you cannot come back and maybe sometimes by the time you come back something has already been said which we are supposed to have noted and you are not available. This is Something because Jesus opened up their understanding to understand. But if you look at it, I would want to put it in a certain order. We said, look, that should be the first one. And neutralize should be the second one. And encourage should be the third one. Inquire should be the fourth one. taking notes should be the fifth one and summarize should be the sixth one we are now putting it into order look first as you are looking at the person who is communicating with you neutralize be neutral be neutral don't act like you know what he is going to say That's, this is why most people they don't listen because they already know what the person is about to say. So even if he's going to say something different, they will not even be able to hear. Neutralize. Neutralize. And number three, in the process of doing that, begin to encourage the person to keep on saying more, saying more. And, say, and as you encourage sometimes, 
the person will keep on opening up and opening up. That helps you also to understand what he is talking about in the instructions that he is giving to you. And number four, if you don't understand, you inquire in between. Instead of asking a list of questions at the end, you say at the beginning, maybe it was four hour discussion, and you were quiet. At the end, you are now saying, okay, you said this, all this happened where? Ah. You should have inquired during the conversation. And after inquiring, you are taking notes at the end of everything. You then summarize to the person, okay, say, thank you so much for your time. Listen. So you say it. You want us to have this function. New Year's Eve, you mean this year? Yes, I mean this year. Okay. Okay, so I'll go there and, and ask about uh, the phase, right? Yes, yes, I'll do that. You're trying to summarize, trying to highlight. you Because, because you know what? <laughs> you might have said a lot of things. But try to have a summary, touch on the most important areas. That is what makes you a disciple. A disciple is a good listener ordained by Jesus to be around him. It takes an ordination for you to be able to listen and to understand. It's an art. Listening, it is an, an art. How good can you communicate? This is what happens. Sometimes I've noticed that in most cases, some people they think maybe I'm 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 too loud just because most of the time I'm on the microphone. But when I'm not ministering and we're talking one on one, it might be difficult for my voice to be heard. So if I send somebody to do something, he might not be able to hear what I'm saying. Not because his listening skills are down, but because my communicating skill also is down. If I'm saying something every time and somebody has to ask me for the second time, what did you say? It could be his problem of not hearing or my problem of not being able to communicate well. I'm, I'm closing on this note. Have you noticed that it's something that you can almost get used to? That when somebody says something, in most cases you say, what did you say? Huh? Even, if, even when you have understood you just want him to repeat. But doing that as well, you are complicating the person's life. He's living his lifetimes too. It's like you're asking your wife, ah, have you seen my iPad? Eh? Or what did you say? Have you seen my iPad? It's not because she didn't hear what you say. But this is the problem. It might be because your voice is too long for her to hear and then later on to understand and then later on to judge. So the correction has to be done on your part. But if you are loud enough you can be loud enough not to be heard. Work on yourself first, the way you communicate. Right? Then, if you are now at a level where you can be heard properly, and she still cannot hear you, that's her problem now. Right? Okay, this is the problem. If you realize that you cannot be heard, in most cases, you don't, you don't want to repeat yourself every time. You should learn to use uh,
phrases that precedes what you want to say. Because as you are talking to her, maybe she's watching a movie. And as she's watching a movie, you know women, she's right at the center of the movie. She's trying to figure out how is, how is this thing going to end. And then all of a sudden you bring in something. It takes her maybe four or five seconds to come back from that movie. To give you attention. But you can have phrases or words or actions. Or statements. That, does, that, that, that can precede what you want to say. Just like... Mm, Are you getting something? Yes. Or you can say, ah, my wife, there is something. Those are attention baits. You are trying to bring the person back. So the listener also should be able to master that uh, preceding f- phrase. She must be able now to know that if I hear him saying this, then something is coming. I should be able to collect myself from whatever I was doing and give my attention for something is coming. Have you noticed that so many people, they do that before they can say anything? Yeah, somebody says, <coughs> then you know he's about to say something. Somebody says, uh... Like my father, my biological father, he does that. Um, come on. <laughs> then you know something is, is coming. So those attention baits should be exercised. You lure a person into a conversation. You bring the person from whatever was taking his attention and then you can then begin to communicate. As you are communicating, you have to keep on watching and you can tell that what I'm saying, nobody's listening by the response. And what would Jesus say? Verily, verily, I say unto you, It's an attention bait. Jesus would say, Behold, I give you power. It's not about the behold aspect. It's the power that he wants to talk about. Surely, 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 I say unto you. And then the thing that he begins to say, you now have your attention and focus on him.